Hello, I'm Phil, Cant uh, Secretary of the Canterbury Crusaders Gaming Club, and we're going to play a rematch of the game we had last week, which sees 2,250 points of Tomb Kings against the same amount of Orcs and Goblins. Last week, we managed to kill more of ourselves than each other, leading to a rather humorous, if quite much of a stalemate game. So, hopefully, today should be just as exciting. Hi, I'm David, and this is my Goblin list. First of all, the Lord Choices, I have a Knight Goblin Warboss, armed with a Great Weapon. A level 3 Goblin Great Shaman, riding an Arachnorok Spider, with the Catchweb Spider Shrine. And the uh, Hero Choices, I have a level 1 Shaman, with a Dispel Scroll. A Knight Goblin Big Boss, Battle Standard Bearer, and he has the Wailing Banner. And a Knight Goblin Big Boss, with Fencer's Blade, Riding a giant cave squig. My core choices today are 90 Night Goblin Spearmen with a full command and netters, 40 Night Goblin Archers with full command, and 5 Goblin Wolf Riders. Special choices today are 6 tr normal trolls and 10 Night Goblin Squig Hoppers. And the rare choices we have a one Doom Diver Catapult, another Arachnorok Spider, and two Mangle Squigs. This is my Araby themed Tomb King list, and these are some of the heavy hitters. We've got a War Sphinx, we've got a Casket of Souls, that would be particularly well against the low leadership goblins. We've got a Scream Skull Catapult, and moving on to Core, we've got a big block of six chariots, led by a Tomb Prince. We've got a block of 68. Uh, skeletons armed with hand weapon and shield and they'll be led by Tomb King behind them we've got five horsemen hoping to lure the fanatics out we've got a unit of a unit of 19 skeleton archers I've only got a level 1 hyphen we're running very magic light today and all of this will be buried we've got Prince Poffus did very well the following week uh, we've got some Sepulchral Stalkers and we've got some Necropolis Knights buried Okay, so both sides are deployed, and looking at the battlefield, we have over, over in the far is a building which we're treating as impossible terrain. There are then a number of mysterious forests, and a couple of huts which we'll also treat as impossible terrain. The goblins have deployed mostly on the right hand side, with the Ragnarok spider on the flank, along with the squig hoppers and a manga squig. The trolls are standing by the big unit of goblins to benefit from the general leadership and also the reroll from the Battle Santa Barra. The shaman and the other unit of archers are there four in the centre and a mangler squig again on the other side. And finally the wolf riders who have made their vanguard moves so they're halfway up the battlefield. Okay, so from the left side of the board, uh, the scoot's catapult is hiding behind the mysterious forest. The chariots are lining themselves up against a multiple amount of opponents. Uh, the war sphinx is making his way through the middle of two huts. The horsemen are vanguarded towards the goblins and I hope to try and lure the fanatics out. The big unit is uh, starting the centre of the board and the uh, archers are hoping to shoot down those wolf riders before they hit combat. I've still got three units off the table that need to be deployed once they come out of the sands. Goblin turn one, the Goblin Wolf Riders moves up to the flank of the archers. The Magnus Grig moved forward, as did the Arachnorok Spider. These archers stay put. And meanwhile, the uh, Night Goblins move forward to get within eight inches of the horsemen. And as you can see, they're all gone. Yay! The trolls also move forward, as did the Magnus Grig, the Squig Hoppers, and the Second Spider. Magic phase, the Goblin Shaman casts Gork will fix it on the skeletons, uh, causing them to reroll any sixes. He then follows it up with a big version of Vindictive Glare, inflicting 3d6 strength 3 hits, and that killed 5 skeletons. And then to follow up, he then went with Curse of the Bad Moon, which has fallen a little bit short, but it is in the way. In the shooting phase, the Doom Diver fired towards the casket and missed, but did hit the war kitten and took a wound off him. 
It's now Team King's turn. Turn off for the Team Kings was very quick. Not an awful lot happened. Chats moved back slightly. Open fire at the Mangler Squig. Unfortunately, uh, didn't manage to injure it at all. The War Sphinx moved forward. The Casting of Souls cast its power at the Arachnorch Spider, but it was stopped by a Dispel Scroll. Uh, the Skeletons stayed where they are, and the Skeleton Archers opened fire on the other Mangler Squig, taking it down to one wound. Apart from that, though, not a lot happening this turn. Just wait for more reserves to come in. Goblin turn two. The Wolf Riders moved up again towards the Archers. Shot at them and missed. The Mangler Squig piled forward towards the uh, Skeletons. The Arachnorok moved forward and he cast a couple of spells. Uh, didn't manage to get anything off. And then unfortunately the template came back towards him and on the strength test, but they were both passed. The archers here, they moved forward a bit and not a lot now. The spearmen failed their animosity test and stood there doing not a lot while the trolls apparently moved forwards. The mangler squig headed towards the woods as did the squig hoppers and the last of the rock piled forward also. In the shooting phase, the Doom Diver shot again at the casket of souls, hit but failed to wound, and that's it. Okay, Team King turn two, see some taking more of an offensive. Uh, the Scream Scroll Catapult managed to uh, hit my own guys, killing one of them. So it's the first unit to take an injury on myself. The Chariot charged into the Squig Hoppers, unfortunately, only killed several with impact hits. And they managed to strike back, killing the my Toon Prince's chariot. So he's on foot, slowing the whole unit down. But I did break him, and it got past this Mangler Squig slightly. Uh, they're now flanked, obviously, by the Ragnarok Spider. Over here, the Subcourt Stalker's come out of reserve and got rid of the pesky Doom Diver Catacomb before it killed my Casket of Souls. The War Sphinx managed to trundle forward and try and charge the Trolls, which promptly fled, fearing its fiery breath. Casket of Souls got dispelled again. The massive unit of skeletons tried to charge the Arachnorch Spider in a brave move, but that failed and they just moved forward four inches. Now they're probably going to take a vortex to the face. Uh, the archers open fire, killing the Mangler Squig, doing exactly what I wanted them to do. So that's the end of Team King Turn 2, still waiting on the Acropolis Knights and Prince Apophis. Okay, Goblin Turn 3, and the Wolf Riders moved up behind the archers, shot them and missed. The archers here, they moved forward a bit and shot at the skeletons and did no damage. The trolls rallied, and so just sitting there doing not a lot. And the Mangus Grig piled straight through the chariots, killing three of them, and also wounding the prince. And the Ratmox Spider over here, he's now moving towards the Skull Chucker. And in the magic phase, the Goblin Shaman cast the big version of Curse of the Bad Moon, killing lots of skeletons, and also wounding the prince, which is a bonus. Uh, that's the end of Goblin Turn 3. Team King Turn 3, things are looking slightly different now. Uh, the Chariots turned around and the Team Prince ran out of the unit by himself, uh, since he's no longer on a chariot. Prince Apophis uh, tried to turn up, then um, got buried too deep, so went back into reserve along with the, Sepulchre, the Necropolis Knights, who are also still off the table. The Sepulchral Stalkers has injured Mangler Squig, but yeah, killed one of their own number in return. The uh, War Sphinx ran valiantly forward, attacked the trolls who trembled in fear, and then ran them all down with his fire breath killing quite a few of them. Uh, the massive Goblin Horde is now fleeing because of a giant template of death which went through their own guys, killing 25 of them. So now they're running away, which has helped me out humongously. My big block unit just turned to face the spider, my archer shot it, managed to wound the wizard once and the spider once. The casket failed dismally to cast its spell once more, and the Scream Skull Catapult also, in a contest of ineptitude, failed to hit anything once again. Thus ends Team King turn three, and things are looking a little ropey for the goblins at the moment. Right, goblin turn four, and the big unit of 
um, spearmen have rallied, but they're still sitting in the, the forest, which is a fungus forest. So they're stubborn, but they're also stupid. Over on the, the rear over here, the uh, wolf riders charged into the rear of the archers, killed a few, won combat, but now the skeletons have reformed and given themselves a rank. The man with Grig did what it's supposed to do and with his random movement went straight back through the chariots, killing two of them and so just one left now on one wound. And the arachnoid spider charged into this, the skull trucker and beat it in combat. And that was it really. Tomb King turn four, this is the majority of my units just uh, turning to face the goblin horde. Casket of Souls fails again to cast any useful spells, like any spells. Uh, my big skeleton block charged the spider, just about getting into range, despite only being six inches away, uh, forcing it to flee by throwing their champion into a challenge. And uh, the spider only caused one wound, so they, they won combat res by four. Uh, the knights turned up to help him out, but now the spider's around the other side of them. My skeletons are still holding in against the wolf riders. And Prince Pothus has turned up, ready to wreak carnage upon the goblin hordes. Right, goblin turn five, and the shaman failed his rally test, so he ran off the board. The wolf riders attacked in combat, and it was drawn combat, two each, so I still one more than he has, that's my bonus. But I did keep passing my uh, fear test, which is helping. Over here, and the shaman cast Gift of the Spider God on the archers, and they fired at the spearmen. They're not spearmen, they've got hammer and a shield. Um, but with their saves, they only killed one. Killed one. Meanwhile, the Ragnarok Spider head further towards the casket of souls. And the Magnus Grig, who, despite being random movement, seems to be going off these chariots. So. We're looking good, looking good for that. Uh, that's the end of Goblin Turn 5. Toon King Turn 5. And my guys circled dangerously close to the massive Goblin Horde, ready for one massive onward slaughter and hopefully try and wipe them all out. Uh, Prince Poff has charged the Goblins who fail, failed their terror check on double six. But because of the BSB, they actually passed. and didn't run them all down like the last game. So he's actually had to stay and fight. He's killed a couple. But I've now turned around to face him. Casket of Souls, disappointingly, has not killed the Arachnor or Spider. So it's going to die a horrible, horrible death. Uh, there's only one Wolf Rider left, no archers. I consider that a fair game. It's all one turn left. I'm intrigued to see what the massive Goblin Horde does to try and escape its predicament. And if the giant Mangler Squib actually kills the final chariot. Right, Goblin turn six. The Ragnarok Spider charged into the casket and killed it very nicely. Uh, the lone wolf rider decides to go after the, um, the knights, shot them for fun and missed. Over here, there was a big unit of goblins and they charged into the, the uh, skeletons and all went a bit wrong there. Uh, so they, they ran away, got fled and yeah, and they're all dead now. But the good news, Prince of Poppers is dead, thanks to some goblins chopping him up in close combat. Um, although there's still another Tomb King turn, I'll try to call it, um, and it's pretty, much, it's pretty much game over. Well, the Night Goblins were victorious. The uh, Goblin General, he ploughed through all of the Tomb Kings. Uh, there's hardly any undead left on the table now. Um, so the Goblins did pretty well, I think. Yeah. Good game. All right, looks like another Tomb King victory against the Goblin Hordes. Uh, despite the fact some of my stuff did absolutely nothing all game, namely the Casket of Souls, Scribs of Catapult, even though Coffin's Knights did absolutely nothing this game turned out decidingly late. Prince Poffers didn't decide to do a repeat of last time and run all the goblins down with his terror causing, and instead died to a handful of poison spirits. Um, but apart from that, uh, eventually crushed the Goblin Hordes, proving they are very cowardly, and uh, yeah, ended in quite a strong position for the Tomb Kings, really.